what if if you have too much oxalate in your system, what does that look like? Is are there more things that we need to look at? Yeah, right. Because fundamentally, oxalate's interfering with the basic metabolism that involves tissue repair and recovery and tissue maintenance. So if you feel like you're falling apart, that's mm. one of the signs. Uh, it's very neurotoxic. So if you have funny neurological issues, like you don't sleep well, you're having memory issues, recall issues, you drop things a lot, uh, you name it. There's a lot of things with neurofunction. It includes the control of sphincter muscles in the body. Like it's possible that a reflux condition is happening because the sphincter at the top of your stomach isn't working well because the nerves are essentially paralyzed and dysregulated and oxalate can cause that. Hmm. I've seen that on the other end of the digestive system where rectal function was gone, like the sensory neurons and the motor neurons in the rectum of this one person was causing fecal diarrhea for 13 years. She'd have 10 accidents a day and it didn't take very long, three or four days off, off the almonds and spinach where that finally stopped. Okay. Um, bone issues, joint and tendon issues, muscle knots, arthritis, inflammation, back pain, tooth sensitivity, tartar, eye issues. It's amazing. It just basically the, the trifecta is there's something going on with gut health plus rheumatism or muscle, you know, kind of muscle skeletal issues and or neurological. So as long as you got gut issues plus either neurological or neurological or rheumatological muscle and joint pain, that's kind of what this looks like. Um, but it can manifest as something as simple as a trigger finger or carpal tunnel syndrome or a backache and then just gets worse where you start just not sleeping very well and then you just feel more and more tired or your brain isn't as sharp anymore and can come on in subtle ways.